everybody welcome back to another tutorial and in this one I'm going to be going through how to draw hair and I'm going to be using charcoal for this tutorial but you can use graphite as well if you want to. Now I'm going to be going through my step-by-step -step process for how I draw realistic hair and first let's go through the materials that I'll be using. So I'm just going to be using some charcoal pencils from my Lyra charcoal set and I'll leave a list of all of the materials that I'm using in the description below. And I'm also using the Strathmore Bristol Vellum surface paper for this drawing. Because I am using charcoal, I like to have a paper that has a bit more tooth and texture to it like the vellum paper. Now for each step that I'm going to go through with this drawing process, I'll start off by demonstrating it on a single lock of hair and then I'll take you through those same steps with a full hair study that you've seen at the start of the video. Now you want to start off by drawing a sketch outline, but my tip for doing this would be to make sure that you're just sketching out the shape of each section of hair. Do it in clumps and as locks of hair. Don't sketch in every single detail in the hair. Your sketch outline doesn't need to be really detailed. Try and keep it nice and simple and just focus on the volumes of hair. Now I only use two charcoal pencils for my drawings, a H charcoal pencil and a 2B pencil and I start off by using the H pencil as you can see here to just block in the direction the hair is going in and just to add in the mid-tones for each section of hair. I'm starting off with this single lock of hair just to show you how I go about doing this and you can see that I'm using my pencil using lines going in the direction that the hair is going in and I'm being very light with this and then I add a bit more pressure to get in some of the shadows as I go. But I always work from the lighter areas and then build up the shadows afterwards. And I think the main things to keep in mind when you're drawing hair is to make sure that you're following the direction the hair is going in. And with each section or new lock of hair, the direction could be completely different. So make sure you keep looking at your reference photo. Now I'm just repeating that exact same step, but for this full hair study. And you can see that I'm going through this section at a time and really spending a lot of time on each section. And whenever I am doing a realistic study, I make sure to find a reference image to follow. Otherwise, it's very hard to make something look realistic if you're not following a reference because you need to see where the shadows are and you need to see the direction the hair is going in. For this, it's okay to leave areas white for the technique that I am using. I don't shade in every single part of the hair study because when I blend it using a brush later on, we'll fill in all of the white parts of the paper that we've left out. So don't feel like you have to shade in everywhere. Also, try to avoid doing any scribbling motions or back and forth motions. Make sure that you're doing these individual sweeping lines that are going with the direction of the hair. If you start to do back and forth motions, then it's just going to look messy and you'll lose that realistic texture of the hair. I find that one of the main reasons why beginner's hair doesn't look super realistic is because of the fact that they're trying to rush through it too much. So I know it can be daunting when you have a lot of hair to draw, but really try and take your time because if you rush through it and just scribble over the whole of the hair, then it won't look realistic. Now before I move on to the next step, if you want to follow along with this drawing in real time and follow along with me every step of the way, then I have got the full real time tutorial for this hair study and another one available on my Patreon as well as over 300 other real time tutorials, not only for charcoal but for graphite, coloured pencil, watercolour, pastels and much more. So for a small amount per month, you'll get access to all of these tutorials and new tutorials every month. But if you don't want to do a monthly membership, then I have also got individual courses available on my website, which is great for those of you that just want to focus on improving at one specific medium or subject matter. So my courses are a one-off payment and you'll be able to then access the course whenever you want and watch it as many times as you want and learn all of the techniques that you need to to improve at that specific medium or subject matter. I've got lots of courses available on my website so I recommend checking it out, you'll be able to find something there to suit your needs. 
So if you are interested in learning more about my Patreon or my courses, the links to both of them will be in the description. And for a short amount of time, I am also offering 15% off all of my courses to celebrate the launch of my course website. So if you use the code SAVE15 at checkout, you'll be able to get 15% off all of my courses. Okay, so now let's move on to step two of this hair drawing process. And for step two, I always go in with my 2B charcoal pencil. So this is the darkest of the two pencils. And I use this to start to establish the shadows that I can see in the reference. And it's important to make sure that you do get in these shadows if you want your drawing to pop. And another reason why people's drawings don't look realistic and the hair doesn't stand out is because it doesn't have enough contrast. And by contrast, I mean there isn't a large range in values within the hair. And so if you don't get in these dark shadows, then the hair won't pop and it won't have a lot of depth to it. So make sure that you do go in with those darker colors, whether you're using graphite or charcoal, it doesn't matter. Go in with a darker pencil and make sure that you do get in those couple of shadows that you will see. Also, it is very important to preserve the highlights as well. It's just as important to leave highlights within the hair as it is to add in the shadows. So that is why I said, don't feel like you have to go and draw over every part of the hair. You can leave some areas white to let some highlights shine through. Now let's move on to step three, which is one of my favorite steps. And for this, I use a fluffy brush. So you can use any round fluffy paintbrush that you have. I just use an old watercolor brush. And I use this to blend over and soften out my pencil strokes. And this is great because it does soften out all of those pencil strokes, which gives it more of a natural look, but it also adds a little bit of tone to those areas that we've left white so that they're not just bright white and artificial looking. So as you can see, I'm now gonna go in and do this with the full hair study and I very lightly sweep my paintbrush over every section. And just like when I added in the shading, I go specifically with each section at a time following the direction the hair is going in when I blend out these pencil strokes. Now this is one of my favorite techniques for using with any of my charcoal drawings. I really find that this brush technique is amazing for blending out the pencil. It's one of the most effective ways that I have found and it does work with graphite as well, but not as well as charcoal. Now to blend it out even more, I'm going to go in with my blending stump. And so the paintbrush does a great job at generally softening everything out. But if you really want to remove the graininess from a specific area, then I recommend going in with a blending stump as that is a little bit better at really blending out some of those harsher pencil strokes. I also use it to add a few subtle flyaway hairs and adding individual flyaway hairs is another key part of making your hair study look realistic. If you don't add any flyaway hairs, then it's just gonna look very uniformed and it won't look, look natural and like there's much motion to the hair. So make sure you go in and add a few little wisps of flyaway hairs. As you can see, I've done in this little individual lock of hair, I've added a few individual strands going over onto the background and that just helps to break up that big lock of hair and to make it look nice and natural. Once I have blended out the hair study, I then like to go in with my charcoal pencils again. So I go in mainly with the 2B pencil and I just see if I need to darken up any areas before I go in and add in the highlights because when you blend using the brush or the blending stump, it can lighten up certain areas a little bit, especially the darker areas. So this is the time where you need to look at your drawing and identify the darkest areas that you can see in the reference image and just check to see if you've got them dark enough in your drawing because it's so important to get the contrast right and it's important to work on the shadows before you go in and add all of the highlights. And whenever I'm using these pencils, I'm still using the exact same technique. I am just darkening it up, but I'm following the same process of just doing individual lines and avoid outlining your sections of hair. So that is another common beginner mistake is to go and define each section of hair by outlining it. But if you outline the locks of hair, then it will just look cartoony. 
Now time for another one of my favorite parts, which is adding in the highlights. This does such a great job at bringing the hair to life and making it look really realistic. And for this, I like to use a stick eraser. They are great for getting in tiny little details like I'm doing here. And specifically, I am using the Tombow Mono Eraser, which I just get off Amazon. Again, all of the links will be in the description for my materials. And I use this not only to add in the highlights, but also to add in more flyaway hairs. And then once you've done the highlights, you've pretty much finished with the hair. So let's go through this process with the main hair study now. So with my particular reference, the left hand side of the hair had a lot of highlight to it because the sun was shining down on that half of the hair. So I'm mainly going to be adding the highlights to the left hand side of this hair study. I'll also be using it to add in individual little wisps of hair to create the flyaway hairs and that is going to again break it up, not make it look so uniform and rigid. One thing I recommend is using a little exacto knife to every now and again just cut off the end of the eraser because I found that it works really well for a few little wisps and for adding a little bit of highlights and then it gets a bit dirty at the end and it's not as effective. So I then go in and I just chop the end of the eraser off and then it's really good again. Especially with charcoal, I found that it's it gets dirty very quickly. So I just added in a few little details with the eraser and I'm just touching up any areas that I feel need to be darker with my 2B pencil. But really that is all I do to create really realistic looking hair studies. That is my step-by-step -step process of how I attempt any hair study using charcoal or graphite. I hope you learned something from this tutorial and found it useful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.